dear friend today we are going to learn about consideration we are learning about the contract and contract is about agreement enforceable by law when we heard about agreement agreement was talking about as promise or a set of promise for consideration of each other when we are talking about enforceability of law one of the essential element given there is also consideration that makes consideration cardinal principle of contract section 23 to 25 describe contract uh, consideration in the contract act of 1872 when we talk about the contract I, it must be quoted what lord denning says consideration is cardinal necessity for formation of a contract According to Justice Patterson, it means something which is of same value in eyes of law. When it has been defined, it is meticulously defined in Section 2D. When at the desire of the promiser, promisee or any other person has done or abstained from doing or does or abstain from doing or promised to do, or abstain from doing something. Such act or abstinence or promise is called consideration for the promise. If we note it, it is very nicely said that it is at the desire of the promiser, not at the desire of promising. When it removes at the desire of the promising, it moves on two bases: on the base of act done or the abstinence. If we mark every time into the sentence, then we are able to see that a whole. definition is talking about person has done or abstain from doing does or abstain doing or promise to do so it mentioned past present and future all tenses the consideration is must and if we say the consideration it is just in a simple word it means a return promise or something in return like quid pro quo the reason of involvement of a contract can be easily seen as contract is nothing else but a relation between two parties or more may be economical social or political or any other reason every time relation is a means of contract roman law clearly mention the base of relation as quid pro quo that is this for that something in return is essential element of relation that is why the consideration is been brought in since contract is to extend relation of two individual commitment and stress over it naturally consideration become its cardinal principle it must be very essential aspect of it law has extend to say the words like no consideration no contract and so this proves the importance and essentiality of presence of consideration need for consideration is again a second course where we can go in looking about the rules of consideration one after another first as we discussed in the definition very first line says at the desire of the promiser okay the movement of a consideration is at desire of the promiser it can be very evidently see okay the desire of the promiser may be expressed or implied the act done or loss suffered by the promisee may have been done or suffered at the desire of the promiser act done voluntarily or at the request of third party would not be valid okay it may be if anyone goes at the, for a voluntary search and then claim for any benefit then if promiser has not asked for it or not declare for it the volunteer search cannot be paid for it a very simple case we will take is of a durga prasad versus baldev okay the plaintiff built one market at collector's desire the defendant occupied one shop with a promise of to a plaintiff that on so provided that whatever the goods he is selling he will be providing a commission to him he failed or he denied to give this commission later on durga prasad moved to the court and he asked for his promise to be fulfilled but 
as the market was constructed at collector's desire and not at defendant's desire or not at a plaintiff's desire, the demand for this promise and existence of this promise was not been accepted as the promise was not at the desire of promiser. It was being enforced upon him. The next point is consideration may be given by promising to any other person. What it simply means is promise may move from one person to another. He may be relative or non-relative. So a stranger to a consideration according to this case or according to this rule may be said to can be sued on the agreement. This is called the doctrine of constructive consideration. Let us say here when one property was owned by a person, he asked that the property's rent should be paid to the sister. The tenant denied the liability as the property was not belonging to the sister. But the court declared that no property is not belonging but consideration was moved by the professor so it must be paid to whomever it has been said and that person is liable to sue or claim the rent. Consideration may be past, present or future. It is very clear that it may be in past before action has been done, if against the action immediately or when the action has been done into the future. Like X find Y's lost child, Y promises to pay rupees 5000 for finding his child. The consideration of rupees 5000 is for past action of X but it is still liable. A good sold directly is a present consideration where we ask for a good, they give us and we pay for it immediately. The future can be mentioned as if A promises to B to deliver him certain mobile or some instrument okay, whereas he has paid earlier and the instrument is being given later on okay, which is also considered to be an executory consideration. Consideration may be an act abstinence of promise. Okay. This means that consideration may not be only for an act of doing some work together. It may also be to restrain some work. Here in uh, this case where Kasturi Devi withdraws the case against the husband when husband promises for the maintenance. This itself shows that when she, she is getting a consideration, she is withdrawing and this withdrawal is based on some amount what she is getting. This is called an abstinence or a promise for a consideration. Consideration need not be adequate. It is having a value in I that, sorry, it must be of some value in the eyes of law. It must, it is not necessary that it is advocate. When we go for some business, then we find that both the parties, if they invest equally, they should get equal. But this is not necessary term. It may be that one party do invest, the other party asks for more shares in it. In such case, the consideration is not said to be adequate, but yet it exists because it has some value in the eye of law. Both the parties have agreed upon it, then the law also is about to accept it. Consideration must be lawful, it must not be unlawful because the whole thing is to enforce law. If it restrains the law itself, then what is the use of having such consideration? So consideration must be lawful. Like here in the case, money was borrowed for the purpose of marriage with of minor. Okay. Lending money was not wrong, but the purpose of borrowing the money was wrong. So this whole process is totally unlawful and it cannot be considered. Consideration must be competent or real and not illusory. This is very important to define 
that how do you differentiate the real with illusion or not competent okay the illusory or not competent are basically illegal consideration or impossible consideration like i will i will like to take is uh, one person who owes rupees 1000 to wife promised to pay rupees 200 to the third person the servant of second person who in return promised to discharge first person from his debt this is legally impossible because how can a servant or an employee claim for the owner's uh, debt and ask them to redeem it is not at all possible there are certain time physical impossible uh, physically impossible demands are been asked like one uh, girl asked a boy okay that if he runs at a speed of 200 km per hour then she will be ready to marry him now this is physically impossible and performance is done possible and this kind of promises cannot be accepted by law uncertain considerations where a engages b for doing a certain work and promises to pay a reasonable sum there is no recognized method of ascertaining the reasonable remuneration we should be certain about it okay and finally the illusory consideration i remember a very good example two of the crew of a ship deserted in half a way through a voyage the captain thereby promised to divide the salary of two crew member among the rest of the crew if they worked the vessel home now it was the duty of every uh, employee on the uh, ship that is every crew to take the vessel to the home now on taking making their duty done they cannot be charged or they cannot be paid anything extra as per the law so these are totally an illusory promises Con- consideration may be something which the promiser is already bound to do where a person is already bound to do something new consideration to perform the pre existing contract is not valid one very important aspect is privity of contract where the contract is done between two parties and this two parties are only right to consider and they are only people to interact with each other so the law mentions as ancien courts it is a general rule of english law that a contract cannot confer any right on one who is not a party to the contract even though the very object of contract may have been to benefit him okay so even there is a benefit if a third party gets an involved okay then that third party cannot sue a person who is not party to a contract cannot sue upon it second a contract cannot confer right or impose obligation arising under it on any person other than parties to it and third it simply means tangent to contract may not file a suit on the third party now here we need to distinguish stranger to consideration and where consideration is moved by the promisor to someone else that party do have a right to sue but when the obligations are been conferred or the right are been conferred then that person become a stranger to contract and he or she does not have any right but there are some exceptions when this consideration is moved or this uh, charges are moved on the base of a trust or some charge okay it is very very clearly mentioned in the case here that a daughter in law a uh, 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 both the father of a daughter and a son promised to each other that father of a boy will be paying to daughter in law rupees 500 per month after a while he stops paying daughter in law rupees 500 and daughter in law sues while well, the promise was been done to the father of the daughter and not daughter in law so at this end the consideration can be considered as an third party but here since daughter in law was directly being beneficiary to the consideration as well as there was a trust been entrusted by the father in daughter and in father in law this case was been heard 
and her appeal was being considered another is a marriage expenses okay the provision of a marriage expenses of female member of a joint hindu family entitles the female member to sue for such expenses on a partition between male members when there is a divorce occurring whatever the ex, uh, marriage expenses were been done female are having right or female is having right to claim that if it has been done okay but there are certain arrangement where it cannot be enforced uh, we remember the belper versus belper case where both husband and wife uh, were staying separate due to the health reason and uh, husband promised a uh, wife to give some amount and when he fails and wife tried to sue it into the court court said it's a family arrangement but here the family arrangement is not there because they are trying to get separate okay or in the other case where the contractually they have taken already taken the benefit out of that money or out of that consideration or uh, or any action which has been done and that they are giving in compensation like here a mother was been promised that if a property is been sold then both the son will be giving her 300 rupees here the property is already been sold and they have taken up all the benefits out of it and now they have paying only 300 rupees so that is actually the mother's property which was been sold and in failure of such case mother can sue them and she had done it in one of the case called shapu anmal versus subramanyam and mother was considered and was asked to enforce the promise and son was asked to pay okay acknowledgement of liability or estoppel is what we can say in the case of acknowledgement okay where a consideration uh, a mood a mood is consideration to b for the rent to be collected from c if b is failing to receive the payment b can sue c and this is what we call that stranger to consideration is permitted what we can talk in end is about assignment of a contract okay where an assignment is being transferred to someone or to a third party and asked to do some work and his consideration is not been paid though he is not party to the contract but both the party has appointed the third party and definitely he is uh, being privileged to take his benefit for which he has been working there is a special case of an agency especially the agency which is working on the principal name itself such agency also can claim for their benefit for their benefit okay and this kind of the cases are also considered okay such type of an agency creation is basically called as a gratuitous agent uh, a normal agent may be taking their consideration quite in advance okay covenant running with the land okay a covenant running with the land in such case a person buying land is party to covenant or agreement though he may not be aware of it yet he is free to ask for consideration whenever he wish so that is what the rule of privity is saying that consideration must move from promise on the the stranger to a consideration cannot sue if it is furnished by any other person then the promise he becomes a stranger to the consideration and therefore cannot enforce the promise this bring us to the question that what is a actually the case or the value of a consideration okay and we rightly remember justice steamer who said in 1778 that agreement without consideration is ex nudo facto non oritur actio it is an action it is a nude agreement it is a nude agreement and has no actual values our indian contract act 1872 has taken this value as it is and under section 25 uh, it is considered as void but there are con- exceptions to contract where consideration is not there yet the contract exists philosophically speaking i do believe that here also there is some consideration but not a direct consideration 
Okay. Then our monetary consideration. Let us see first agreement based on natural love and affection. Where anything which is based on natural love and affection and it has been gifted, which is given in writing and registered. Okay. All and it is purely based on natural love and affection and not only to show some uh, benefits. Okay. And it is between near relative. Then such agreement is always considered. And even though consideration is not there, then also this contract is valid. Past voluntary services, where a person has already done some voluntary action, and after that he claims for any benefit, then that consideration did not be considered, and the person might have done this act without expectation of any consideration because he has already completed his task. Time for debt. The debt in which a return contract is been done and is been asked to pay with interest in certain amount in certain due time, and that is also been crossed. In such case, any third party or the party itself want to pay the whole amount and withdraw, then such time bar debt is been allowed without a consideration to the first party. Completed gift is basically absolutely a complete gift given to someone without any expectation and their consideration has no means and law of agency where we open up a new agency okay and they are a gratuitous agency such place consideration is not being there there are few questions which you can note down which can be asked into the exam please see to it These are some short notes which have been asked in previous paper. You can form it on the base of the notes provided to you. That is all what we will like to discuss about consideration. Thank you.